Hey guys, Barrett here. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're talking about one of the most important shots that every 3-5 player must learn. Now, here's the thing. You see this shot a lot in 4-5 play. 4-0 players begin to really learn it. However, I believe that 3-5 players can learn this shot, so stay tuned. Also, stay tuned for the very end of the video because Linda can't hear me right now, but I've got a special surprise for her, so stay tuned to the very end. She's actually looking at me right now, so hopefully she can't tell, but let's get into it. Now, the shot in question here is the forehand roll, a very, very powerful shot and absolutely crucial to have if you want to get to a higher level in pickleball. Here's the big problem that a lot of people have when it comes to volleys is that if you don't have top spin, then when you hit a shot, it can't sort of curve over the net, right? And when it's not curving over the net, you're hitting it flat, which means there's no spin on it and it just kind of goes in a straight line and gravity is what takes it down. But if you start to learn top spin, you can begin to hit your shots a little bit harder. So let me first show you what this whole thing looks like here. Perfect example. First try. <laughs> That's the forehand roll. Really, really powerful shot. It's typically a volley right here in the kitchen. Oftentimes you'll see it happen on the fourth shot. Let's get into how it works. We begin with body positioning and footwork. I know, surprise, surprise, right? It's really hard to do a forehand roll like this when you're standing straight up. We have to get underneath the ball. So when your opponent hits the shot over, again, we're just, this is for demonstration purposes, and we're just gonna pretend like we're doing this on a fourth shot here. But when the opponent begins to hit that shot, you need to start getting low by squatting like this as the ball is coming over. You can sort of think of it as you're kind of like mimicking the ball, how the ball is, is coming down. You wanna sort of come down with the ball. That's the first thing. You have to absolutely squat when you come down. So if you see it from this angle, see how low I'm getting here, okay? That's the first bit. The second bit is you must learn how to relax your arm and relax your wrist especially. It's very hard to do this shot when our wrist is tense. And so what I want you to do is feel like your wrist is completely relaxed like this. The reason why we're gonna do this is because when we come through the ball and we begin to strike, we need to make sure that this wrist is lagging behind like this. You see how my paddle is pointing back like this? So that when we hit the ball, we've got a little bit of snap to the shot. Really, really helps. So make sure that this wrist is nice and relaxed as you're coming through the ball like that. So let's just take those first two things here, show you a couple of examples. So do you see how the paddle kind of lagged behind like this? It's because my wrist is nice and relaxed. <laughs> awesome. Okay, you remember how and when you started pickleball for the first time, you were like completely addicted? Remember those days? When you start to learn this shot and you begin to really get used to it, that whole addiction spiral starts again. It is such a fun shot to do. Fantastic. So. Let's move on to the next point here. Now I'm gonna show it to you from this angle now. When it comes to the actual strike itself, really important to get the paddle down low and pointing at a 45 degree angle down like this. So not here, not here, but kind of down like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? You can, you can adjust it based on what you're comfortable with. But in general, paddle should be down here. When you come through the ball, you're gonna come straight up and you wanna keep this paddle on the right side of your body if you can. If you cross over like this, that's okay. That's typically more for like a ground stroke, but it can really help to keep the paddle on this side of your body as much as you can because it gives you that straight up motion. You see how I'm kind of like drawing a line coming straight up? You see that? That's kind of what you want. 
kind of connecting the dots here. Right? I've got a dot down here and I've got a dot up here. And I'm just drawing a straight line up. Now let me show it to you from a bit of a higher angle here. So same deal, gonna watch the ball, get low, and then come straight up. And you notice how the paddle stayed on my dominant side of the body. Again, you can cross over if that's, if that's comfortable for you, but what will probably happen when you do that is you'll hook the ball. In other words, I'm right-handed, the ball will go left. If you're left-handed, the ball will go right. And so it's just a little bit easier just to keep the paddle over here. Like that, perfect. I love this shot, it's so much fun. Awesome. So again, this will happen a lot on the fourth shot. You know, a really common mistake that people make with a third shot is they hit it too high, right? And it'll be, the ball will be right here, right out in front of you. Question is, what do you do when this happens? And if you don't have a roll, oftentimes people will have to punch it flat, but if they hit it too hard, it's a pop-up, and or it can go out the baseline, and topspin is really the answer. It's really how you solve the riddle here. So. The topspin is what keeps the ball low so that A, it doesn't pop up, of course, but also it doesn't go out. So watch it again from this angle. Now, the cool thing about this shot, though, is that you can very easily take care of shots that are right here in the middle in case you have to come over. All you have to do is just take a big lunge out here like this and make sure that you're coming off of your, your left foot here. You see how my foot's coming off? If you do that, all your way to over here, and then you're able to do the stroke just as usual. So it's quite flexible. It doesn't, you don't have to be stationary right here. You can still move and take care of a shot. A lot of you know, and I know, I know I've said this a billion times, I didn't come from a racket sport. This shot took me forever to get used to. It just takes practice. What, are you, what you are looking for here is to get that one solid shot. When you get that shot, you're on a really, really good track. Don't get frustrated with yourself. It's gonna take some time. One thing that will help, oftentimes we use the continental grip in pickleball, which is this. You see how my index, if I'm an index, create a V, a letter V, and that V kind of points towards my chin. From a right-hander's perspective, you kind of rotate your hand to the right just a little bit to get that kind of Eastern-ish grip. It really helps because it gets that paddle facing down and it'll help with the top spin. Be very careful about the trajectory of these shots. If the shot is heading up too high, it means that your paddle face is open like this too much and you need to kind of close down that grip a little bit more. If the shot is heading into the net, you're either miss hitting it on the bottom a little bit too much or your paddle is too shut. Experiment <laughs> with the grip, experiment with these things and you'll find out what works best. You get that one shot, it becomes addicting, and then you just can't stop from there. That's the general process. Whew, love it. Anyway, guys, <laughs> that is the forehand roll. Give it some time, give it some practice, but man, this kind of shot will elevate your game. It will give you a lot of solutions to problems that plague a lot of people in that kind of three, five area. Again, you don't see the roll very often in a three, five play, but I, I strongly believe that people can handle it. So anyway, I've got a little surprise for Linda. So let's do that now. Linda, I've got a surprise for you. Surprise. You're on you're on camera right now. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're gonna head over my bag. Okay. You're still on surprise. Yes. Yeah. I'm excited. That was a good video, Barrett. Oh, thanks, <laughs> Miss Assistant. Linda has helped me out a lot over the years, and uh, I really appreciate her help. Go ahead and open up the right, the right pocket there. The right. The right one. Yep. <laughs> oh no way. Yes way. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. It's the Selkirk Vanguard. That's the S2 lightweight, but it's yes. the it's the new colors that came out like Love a week it. ago. It like it? Just what I'm wearing. I'm so excited. Good. Oh, thank you. Thank you for helping out with my videos. It's nice, yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's really, really good. So thank you, Rob and Mike from Selkirk for donating thank the you battle. Guys. I'm so excited. <laughs> good. You'll see me on the on the, 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 the metal stand. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Oh thank you guys for joining me. Really appreciate you. Oh. Oh.
<laughs> thank you guys for joining me i really appreciate y'all go to pickleballkitchen.com for more stuff got a bunch of stuff on there anyway guys thanks for joining me i'll see you next time